Pushrod Fury. Pushrod Fury here. It's been a hundred weeks since the uh, Sportster came into my life. And I wanted to share with you sort of why I ended up with the Sportster. And it's unlike any other bike that I've had in that it's just required continuous tweaking and improvement to try to make it fit what I saw you know, in a motorcycle, what I, what I really enjoy in a bike. And I think it's first, it's, it's important to kind of lay down like w the way I ride and the way I ride is mostly for like basic transportation, right? So to get to the store, to run errands and stuff like that. But when I want to go enjoy myself, it's typically like a 200 to 300 max, but between two and 300 mile day of riding where I get out onto the country roads, get out onto the twisties and just have a blast. And um, I've been fortunate enough to do that through the, uh, the hills in Maryland, through the hills of New York, Western New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and uh, all through the all through some of those mid southern states to like West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and stuff like that. But also in California, where the roads were just absolutely unbelievable. And then occasionally, when I have the time off from work, my rides will extend to like a four or to a five day ride. I don't think I've done any longer than a five day ride before, though, um, on a trip. And so hopefully that kind of puts some context around like my riding, the durations, but I also am a spirited rider. So I've got a racing background. I don't ride sport bikes, but I like sport touring bikes. And uh, really early on, I like the small displacement dual, dual purpose bikes. But uh, in California, I ended up and this is in the Silicon Valley area and it's just amazing roads going to the west and going to the east, every direction, just amazing roads. But I ended up with a Aprilia 900 Shiver, which is a V-twin. It's got plenty of torque, plenty of horsepower, tons of ground clearance. And that bike would just do whatever you asked of it. And unless you've ridden on those roads, the hairpins, the uphill hairpins that you run into, are unbelievable you know it's just so much fun to ride but i had a change in employment i had to go back to the east coast and i knew that that aprilia would get me arrested in new jersey they just wouldn't tolerate that kind of riding so i was looking for a replacement for that and i wanted something that i could enjoy that i wouldn't be too tempted to ride the way that california tolerates and something that looked nice and i tried several bikes right i tried the different moto goozies i tried the new royal enfield i ended up getting drawn into the sportster at first i test rode a roadster and that was fine but i ended up finding this sportster and that was 100 uh, weeks ago it's bone stock gorgeous paint job it was an 883 iron well kitted and it has abs and the keyless start and all of that but no passenger seat, no passenger pegs. The funny thing was it was about a year old and it ended up back at the dealership with, and it only had 50 miles on it. The dealer told me that it was a gift for someone's girlfriend and uh, their girlfriend uh, didn't care for it, traded it in. But boy, oh boy, let that be a lesson to you. I can't imagine if someone just bought me a motorcycle that here, ride this. I mean, how absurd is that, right? So if someone's going to ride a motorcycle, they're going to want to, it's such a personal choice. You can't just show up with, as a gift and uh, say, ride this, especially a sportster. And we'll get into that in a minute. So I didn't waste any time. I knew that I had to get this bike shipped back to the East Coast. And so I wanted to really exercise it on what I knew were some of the best roads in the country. And I was lucky enough very lucky to uh, live pretty close to them. Within uh, 30 minutes of taking delivery of the bike, 
I decided to take it up, take it on this route. And maybe some of you have done this, but uh, starting out, or the important part is starting out in Saratoga, California, and heading up uh, Route 35. And if you do that, you, you ascend this mountain. The curves are just amazing. Um, so many bikes, so many riders go out there, motorcycles, sports cars. I love that road. So you take that road up. When you get to the top of that mountain, you continue. I may get the route na name wrong, but you can continue up the mountain to uh, Alice's Restaurant, down to La Honda, and then from La Honda, go down to uh, Pescadero. And so you can see this map, the squiggles on this map. And again, it's hundreds and hundreds of turns or curves that are just built for motorcycles. So amazing. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I headed out on this trip. It's about 60 miles each direction. It was just an absolute blast. And this is this was a great way to ring out the Sportster, find its weaknesses, find its strengths, and give me an idea of uh, what I might need to improve and what it was capable of. And the first thing I wanted to point out was that getting from you know Saratoga to Pescadero, that 50 or so miles, that's fine. And it held true that that was about as far as my body was willing to tolerate riding on the sports, which is about 50 or 60 miles. And then the ergonomics, the mechanics of the bike just they don't they didn't work for me and so the ride back to go back from pescadero you can see the sun setting in these pictures those are the photos taken you know at the ocean there you know, look at that i mean look at the the ocean look at the sunset and again that moonrise and so the setting was amazing the roads were amazing but that's where the sportster just really showed its shortcomings the suspension, 11 inch shocks without a remote reservoir have like an inch and a quarter of travel. And they're just absolutely brutal when you hit a bump or a ripple. You just, they just bottom out. It doesn't matter how much preload you have. They just bottomed out the seat. Although it looks big and cushy and comfortable, that's nice, that soft foam. So you just, your tailbone is just resting right on the seat pan. So that's no good. The foot pegs. <laughs> that combination of 11 inch shocks and the foot pegs and the foot peg feelers means no ground clearance. And so I touched down, scared the crap out of myself when those sportster pegs touch down and then you have to correct mid corner, that'll wake you up. And so, although I had a lot of fun and I had to work inside the constraints of the bike because you can't have an entry speed, high entry speeds into, into curves because you're going to have to lean the bike further and you're going to touch parts down so then you had to ride the bike less aggressively you had to wait for more gradual like sweeping turns to enjoy like the acceleration of the bike which is you know it's never going to be like a sport bike it's never going to be like you know powerful you know italian or japanese v-twin or anything like that but it is still an 883. It still has, you know, horsepower it's, and torque, I should say. But um, it can could not corner in that stock configuration, not in a way that that uh, was suitable for me. And so in my head, I built a laundry list of things that had to be addressed for this bike, and that's what we'll get into. So I like to ride with my son. We do a lot of two-up riding. We've been up to Canada and all through New England, um, out to Pennsylvania and stuff. We in Niagara Falls, so we really enjoy riding together. And the Sportster comes set up for solo riding. So you, if you're going to have a passenger, you've got to put a proper seat on there. Um, you know, something maybe that will have a backrest for their comfort. And of course, you're going to need foot pegs. And that's when I found the next deficiency in Sportster resources. And that is the information that you find on YouTube about how to do certain modifications. And so you'd think something as straightforward as putting on passenger pegs would be well documented. One in the instructions, two uh, in the you know endless amount of videos on YouTube. And what I saw were a bunch of videos that recommended removing the exhaust system from the bike. So I got the passenger pegs on there. I happened to use the genuine Harley Davidson pegs because the drag specialty pe uh, pegs actually didn't fit 
the bike, but I have a whole video on that. You can watch that video. And then the next thing is, of course, you put passenger pegs on, you're going to need a seat. And I've always loved Corbin seats. The Corbin seat, the names, the people who name them at Corbin, they need to fire those guys and come up with better names, but gunfighter and lady. Well, what about like, you know, 40 something year old dad and son? What about that for the name of the seat? Is it a gunfighter and lady or whatever it's called? But anyway, so they have bad names for their seats, but they're typically really comfortable. And I found one leather Corbin seat with the backrest and it was like 150 bucks on Marketplace. That was a no brainer. If you buy that new, it's like a thousand dollar seat. I got that seat in, super excited. It looks like it's gonna be hugely comfortable. I've had them on BMWs, both my BMWs in the past. And let me tell you, this seat feels like it's carved out of concrete. So hard, so uncomfortable. Again, you can only ride about 50 miles on it before your butt's hurting. I just didn't understand, you know, what is up with this? Is like, like, does every seat that's designed for a sportster intentionally made uncomfortable so you don't ride it? I don't know. But as we continue through this video, we may have a correlation here. So at least I had a seat that could hold two people in a backrest and my son doesn't go flying off the back and a set of passenger pegs. Those are the first set of modifications to make the Sportster into what I wanted. Well, now that I had the Sportster set up with a seat that was tolerable, passenger pegs, it's time to enjoy it. And, you know, my son is learning how to ride. He's had a Honda Rebel. He also has a Ninja 250. And one day we're doing riding lessons in a large parking lot and he asked if he could ride the Sportster. I said, sure, no problem. I think you're ready for it. And so we put him on the Sportster and he did fine on it. You know, he did fine. He didn't like the center of mass. It's kind of got strange balance to it. And it's very heavy, especially compared to the um, 250 bikes that he was accustomed to. So would it make sense for him to be going out on the street his first bike? I, I would think absolutely not. But he got on it. He did some uh, did some riding. He did some great turns, some slow speed maneuvers. You know, it worked out great for him. And then back to my favorite kind of riding, you know, taking that 250 mile day. You can see in these pictures, you know, it was, uh, it was winter time and uh, you know, we wanted to get out and enjoy the Catskills area of New York. And uh, you can see in these pictures, it was still pretty cold out, right? You can see that ice in the background and uh, the Corbin seat uh, holding up okay for, you know, the day, but man, just really putting at the edge of, of comfort um, for a ride of that duration. And the shocks, the shocks showed their limitation. I brought that up on that first ride and I kept adding preload and adding preload and, and nothing would prevent it from bottoming out. Um, and then it was just ultra uncomfortable. Those shocks would be so jarring on my spine, just absolutely terrible. And so we had to find a solution for the shock absorbers and that's next. And just as I was starting to think about a solution for these horrible shocks, a uh, pandemic goes full, full blown, right? It's, 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 uh, goes completely out of control. And you see in this picture, it opens some opportunities to ride places that you normally wouldn't want to go to on a motorcycle. So you see here Times Square, you know, with only one car in the frame and just us on our, on our motorcycles. And so we got to explore around on New York. But this also pointed out just how horrible the suspension is on the Sportster is being able to get out into New York, ride around freely, like no cars. I forget how many blocks, 40, 50 blocks, all green lights as you go up Manhattan and any bump, any uh, void in the pavement or any bump in the pavement is absolutely jarring with these shocks. I mean, they are the worst shock absorbers on any motorcycle I've ever had budget was unlimited and given the performance or at least the reputation, I would have gone with a remote reservoir Olin shock. So after looking at other setups that moving from an 11 inch shock to a 13 inch shock would accomplish a couple of things. It would give me more ground clearance for better cornering and avoid bottoming out, which is a really bad event on a motorcycle, especially to your lower back. What I settled on was a 13 inch racing bros shock absorber with rebound damping. I purchased that from Revzilla 
I made a whole video on how to install that as well. And so, you know, again, now it's now becoming a serial you know, how-to video, or at least a vlogging my experience. And so that's that's how we got into that. And of course, you can watch that. You can see with all this free time that COVID afforded me, I started to pay attention to some of these older Sportster photos and the Sportsters that had this, the original configuration of the Sportster, which was kind of triumph-esque, you know, it was more of a standard looking motorcycle. It wasn't a cruiser. It certainly didn't look like a monkey, you know, humping a football kind of posture on it. It's like a regular motorcycle. And one of the details that I really liked were these cast aluminum grab bars, passenger grab bars in the back. And so I did a little bit of research, to see if I could find one. And sure enough, you can find them once in a while on eBay. And I found one as a 60s era grab bar. It was in terrible condition and it was inexpensive. So I figured, why not? Let's uh, let's grab one of those. It'll, it has got, you know, form and function. Uh, looks, I think they look great. And then it also gives, would give my son something to grab onto or to keep his butt from sliding off the seat when he rides with me. But it also gives you a good tie down point. Like if you've got to carry something on the back seat of the bike and strap it down, uh, you can anchor it to that um, grab bar if you can install it properly. And so ordered that up, cleaned it up really good. That's where I set, found some really good resources on YouTube on how to clean up aluminum and, and get it looking good. Now I didn't get a mirror finish on it, but I got it looking pretty, pretty okay and made some adapter brackets and, you know, bit the bullet drilled, drilled through my fender and put some threaded inserts in the fender to mount it. And uh, might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I really liked it. I really liked the look of the taller suspension now. So you get, you get more clearance between the fender and tire. Of course, you get that's that's the um, form part. The function part of that is a better ground clearance and better you know shock absorbing characteristics. That flat seat, uh, I think it looks really sharp. And the function on that is to raise you up so that you're not slouched over the bike and that worked really well uh, for me and then the grab bar right the grab bar i think just you know to take something that is you know uh 60 years old and uh and a genuine harley davidson part and adapt it to fit a newer harley i think that's pretty slick right so i like that story in my head and of course you could tie stuff to it you can your passenger can grab onto it they don't slide their butt off the seat or whatever and so these elements are all coming together. So what's the next logical progression, right? So we've got better handling. We've got the grab bar on there. We've got better posture on the seat. You're going to want to ride the bike more. When you ride more, you maybe, maybe you want to take stuff with you or you're going to go to the store and bring stuff home. So I like having a set of bags on the bike, but I absolutely hate every bag that's made for a Sportster, I think just looks like garbage. It either looks like a super cheesy cruiser bag with like conchos and fringe on it, you know, the right size. And I've seen people adapt Pelican cases, but they had these big metal cages that they sat in. It just looked ridiculous. And so I started looking at solutions on how to mount bags to a Sportster. And you run into all kinds of problems. Uh, a lot of them, will cause interference with the shock absorbers. So the bag will be carved out where the shock is. And of course, then you lose storage capacity. Well, I want to put stuff in there. You know, I want to be able to put a six pack of beer and a loaf of bread or whatever it may be in my saddle bag and not have a shock absorber taking up half of the capacity. And so I made a video of this too. I found a fantastic set of bag mounts from a company called La Poderosa, and they have these really great Sportster mounting brackets. And these brackets mount right to the shock tower and to the fender strut, and they allow you to keep your stock turn signals. So many bag mounts require you to re replace or relocate your turn signals. It looks super cheesy when you have to do that. I thought this is great. You don't have to compromise for the capacity of the bags. You don't have to move your turn signals. 
And what's really nice is they're designed to be compatible with a bag mounting system called ClickFix. And ClickFix, um, again, there's a video on that too on the website. And this allows you to mount pretty much any bag to the saddlebag mounts. And I thought, what the heck, let's try out the Pelican ammo cases because they're appropriately sized, they're waterproof, they're heavy duty, and um, they're inexpensive. They're like $80 a piece. So they're not gonna break the bank. But let me tell you that combination, and you'll see it, you can see the install video, I think looks really sharp, tons of storage capacity. And the other thing that I like is when you have those two bags mounted and you consider the, the flat seat and the grab bar, now you have a, an area to put a duffel bag. So if you're gonna do some moto camping or something like that, you just have an enormous amount of space that you can dedicate to your gear, right? And then you can have the adventures that you want. And so by adding these bags, I really had set in my mind that this bike was ready for anything. So I use the bike as you see it and load those bags up with groceries, pick up a six pack of beer, run to the workshop, carry tools on it, take it out for a 200 mile ride. Of course, coming back, you'd be aching because the, the shocks <laughs> didn't really work as uh, best they could. Uh, the seat foam was thin and by the way the seat also leaks water so that's kind of an annoyance if it happens to rain and so as you start to see in these pictures you, you know i guess i, I took this out it's going to great group ride up up 218 in new york to set a blast but again it's that first 50 to 100 miles that's enjoyable and anything after that just wasn't fun anymore and this is when I started to examine where I was in the ownership of this bike. I bought the bike. I had to replace the shocks. I had to replace the seat twice. I had to put the saddlebag mounts on and the saddlebags and had all that. But I still didn't have a bike that was comfortable enough to enjoy with the type of riding that I like to do. Really, the only solution to that from my perspective was to replace the suspension. And that's when I kind of paused because I knew that I wasn't going to go for a, like a mid level suspension upgrade. I knew if I was going to do this, it would have to be a high end upgrade. And those upgrades are between 1200 and $1,600, the cost of the bike the cost of transporting it to, to the East Coast, the cost of the upgrades that you see. And then thinking about layering on additional money for that, and also knowing that it not only had to be the suspension, but the seat had to be upgraded. Now, whether I tried to improve the seat myself, or if I brought it to a shop that specialized in improving motorcycle seats, all of that had to get done. The price tag started to just escalate and at the end of the day, it's a Sportster. I didn't ride Sportsters before this, but this one is just not comfortable. It's just not a well handling machine in the configuration from the factory. And so that's when I decided that 100 weeks was enough. It was enough time for me in this Sportster. It was set up for. It set up for moto camping. It could definitely deliver on that. Not for me, it, you know, where I want to go on a 200, 300, 500 mile ride. But for someone who wants to take it out 30 to 50 miles from home, get some camping done and come back, it's probably going to serve them just great. I listed it on Craigslist, was there for a few weeks. Someone reached out to me and they were interested in moto camping, exactly the thing I had the bike set up for. It seemed like a great fit for their story, right? For what they wanted to experience with a motorcycle. And so we struck a deal and the Sportster and I parted ways. It seems like a sort of a sad ending, but it's a great beginning for the new owner. 
it's a great opportunity for me to refocus on some of the other projects. And if you check out the channel, you'll see I've got no shortage of projects and they're all progressing pretty nicely. And so I can focus on those and I can get the type of riding done that I really enjoy on the bikes that I have set up for that and bikes that have been less resistant to getting to that stage, right? To getting to that level of fitness for that kind of riding. And so that's it. You know, I was able to have a Sportster for a hundred weeks. I had a lot of fun with it, had a lot of heartache with it, had a lot of aches and pains with it. Um, maybe a Sportster is for you. Um, and maybe your journey will uh, last longer than a hundred weeks. So thanks for checking this out. Check out the other videos. Uh, subscribe, you know, share this stuff with your friends. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know about your uh, Sportster experience or your motorcycle experience. I'd love to hear about that. And uh, we try to get back to you as fast as we can with responses. So again, thanks for tuning in.